you, the talented Dr. Sam Soleil. So come and join us. Hello everyone, welcome to Posh Panache. We're here in Beverly Hills at Aura Dentistry Spa with the one and only Dr. Sam Sale. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're going to get right into it. I'm really curious to know, how did Aura Dentistry Spa first come about? How did it all begin? Wow. I mean, the seed was planted when I was about 15. I went into, um, I'm, I'm obviously, where I went to school was in London. And in London, you have to choose what topics you want to do in order to go to university really early on in life. So in order to decide you know, what career path you want to take, they advise you to do work experience. So I met with this fantastic dentist um, back when I was very young, his name was Norman Mills, and he was a huge inspiration to me. I just loved his office, he was so charming, everything went so well, his patients loved him. I was like, this is, this is the perfect, this is the dream job for me. And so, um, right from that, right, right from that meeting him and seeing how his office dynamic worked, I realized that I wanted to be high end. I wanted to, do, I wanted to do cosmetic work, yeah. and I wanted it to be an environment where people would actually look forward to coming to seeing me. The common, you know, scenario when you say I'm going to go and see the dentist, a lot of people say, Oh God, poor you, exactly. and God, that's terrible, and the yeah. rest of it. And I didn't really. That's the only problem with dentistry. I didn't really want to be in a field where people would be anxious to come and see me, I wanted it to be more of something that they would look forward to. And so I decided to marry the world of cosmetic dentistry and the world of spa and comfort and luxury together. Love and that, I love are. that concept. That's really amazing. So doctor, since you do amazing work, a lot of people have asked, uh, what, what's other alternatives that you provide for better, good, healthy looking teeth besides braces? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great question, and I hear that question all the time because um, there's a you know there's that age group where people become very aware of their exactly. smile, um, but you know they still want to have a social life, they still want to be out and about, they still want to be good, looking good in the meantime, and they don't really want to have the metallic you know facings on the teeth for for braces. And um, a real revolution in dentistry occurred with the advent of something called Invisalign. Invisalign is a company which was able to basically take clear plastic trays that are worn over the teeth, similar to bleaching trays. And what happens is that the technology will um, will we'll create a simulation. So what we do is we, we take an impression of the teeth, okay, and then they put it into the computer system. So now you have a little mold of what your teeth are like inside of the computer screen three-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. And then they'll take the teeth that are crooked and they'll straighten them out. Okay, so before we even get started, we're able to show the patients what the final result is going to look like. Oh, so we amazing. say, well, your teeth are crooked right now. This is what they'll look like when they're straight. And once the patient actually approves that and we like how straight the teeth go, then the treatment will start. And the laboratory, the Invisalign laboratory, will actually fabricate a series of custom fabricated trays, the clear plastic trays that look like bleaching trays, and the patients will change them out generally every two, every two weeks. Okay, sometimes we have a fast track program where we can make that happen faster but then as you change each of the trays out your teeth move ever so slightly and so you get from point A to point B by changing the, the trays out successively. It's amazing. Oh, wow. it sounds like an easy process. To it's do. fantastic. I did it myself actually and most of myself oh, wow. have done it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a really nice, easy, comfortable way of straightening the teeth out. And a lot of us have that lower late lower incisal yes. crowding which happens on the lower teeth. And it's something that, you know, you, you, it can really affect the speech, it can also affect the other teeth, it can also affect hygiene, mm -hmm. like you said, because when you have crooked teeth, it's easier for food to get stuck in between the teeth, it's harder to floss, and so Invisalign is a fantastic way of treating that problem. Wow, okay. So Dr. Sada, everyone wants wider teeth. They do. Yes, yeah, so there are so <laughs> many options, over-the-counter and more invasive. So what do you think is, what is more, most effective? Mm. to getting those whiter, perfect teeth at our age? Okay. Um, well, 
generally speaking, um, at an early age, if, if, if the discoloration that we've got inside the teeth is within the family of yellow, that would make that patient an ideal candidate for whitening because the yellow stains come up most um, preferentially with, uh, with teeth whitening. Um, the, the most um, successful way of, of whitening those kind of stains would be with in-house office teeth whitening. Um, the gel is applied to the teeth and then there's a blue light that catalyzes the reaction so it makes the reaction go faster and so that the teeth are whitened. One of the common misconceptions that I hear on a daily basis from patients are if I whiten my teeth am I losing a layer of my tooth structure? Okay, They're very lines. worried about that. Mm -hmm. So okay. just to relieve your viewers who, who might be thinking of mm -hmm. that, that's not true and that, that is a misconception. Wow. Oh, so you're not losing any layer of your natural tooth structure. Mm -hmm. All that happens with teeth whitening is that there's an oxygen molecule inside of the gel. Okay. The oxygen molecule goes into the tooth because the tooth is porous and it removes the stain molecules from inside of the tooth, therefore making the teeth appear whiter. Wow. So that's all that's happening. And the sensitivity that you can get on the day of the procedure mm -hmm. is because now the tubules have been opened up and that can sometimes cause some sensitivity. Okay. It's not due to the fact that any of the tooth has actually been lost. I see. Is that a temporary uh, it's Yeah, it's generally speaking, 90% of the cases, the okay. sensitivity lasts just for the first day, the day of the treatment. So That's on that day, we tell our patients, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't plan yeah. anything exciting. So if someone does have sensitive teeth, are, would it be okay for them to do teeth whitening? Would you recommend it if they have... They can certainly do teeth whitening and there's many measures that we take in my office to try and overcome the sensitivity. We can even numb the patient up so that they're not aware of what's going on during the procedure and then there's some post-operative medication that can be taken to relieve the sensitivity in that period where the tooth is still healing from the procedure. Oh, that's great. So, because I know there's a lot of people who have sensitive teeth and they're like, I want to get my teeth whitening, and I, but they're just frightened. But that's great that we all know. Yeah, that. yeah, there's many options. There's many options for that. I also have another question. Um, could you tell us what celebrities you've, you've worked on? Um, I can't tell you everyone, but I can Just certainly tell bit. you the ones that you know go around talking to me, talking about me to okay. to, to the press. Um, I I did the teeth of Mimi Leakes. She's the oh, Atlanta yes, housewife. Yeah, she's a, yeah. She's a great personality. Very um, funny. She has great teeth. She, she does. Very straight teeth. Yeah, and she's she's a lot of fun. I mean, every time she would come in, she'd literally have us in tears laughing. Oh wow. Because, you know, she's she's actually a lot more funny off camera than she is on camera. Oh so wow. Can only imagine. Okay. Yeah. yeah awesome. uh, another favorite of mine is Tyra Banks. Yes. She's gorgeous, okay. yeah, gorgeous, mm -hmm. and you know her smile is a real reflection of the rest yeah. of her face. She's a really I pretty agree. girl, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so we can all agree that he's an amazing doctor. And <laughs> yes. He's done a great job on a lot of patients. Thank but you. But I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about you in terms of like personal life and what you do on your spare time and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Could you probably elaborate on that? Sure, sure. Um, well, I actually got married just under three years ago. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, my life kind of, you know, in the last three years really took a direction into, you know, settling down, not partying so much, you know. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> More of a family man. Um, and so we, um, we actually just had our second daughter. And so, yeah, so it's life for us has really been, um, it's, it's really a, a, a real blessing to be honest with you. Um, just, you know, having a family life has, has really showed me a, a, a different aspect of what fun is for me. And, you know, it's kind of taken away from me and it's more about, you know, what I can do for my family. So now my happiness and, 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 and my goals is to see the happiness in my children. That's so, great. Right? Can you get yeah. any better? Like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we also know you had a birthday recently, so we want to say happy yeah. birthday. Oh, thank happy you birthday. so much. That's kind of you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we also do a fo we have a focus on Middle Eastern success stories. So to mm -hmm. us, you are definitely a Middle Eastern success story. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us about a little bit about where you came from mm -hmm. and how you've gotten to where you are today? Okay. Um, well, I was I was born in Iran. And wow. we uh, we left Iran when I was very young, so I, I don't really have a lot of recollection of Iran. I would say that um, I 
London was more of a, a home base for me. So uh, growing up in London, I was actually surrounded by a lot of Middle Easterners because you know we have people from all over the Gulf living living in London. So um, it was it was kind of nice because I still still felt like I was in touch with my roots despite the fact that I wasn't actually raised in the country that I was born in. Um, and London was a great foundation for me. I think, you know, in terms of my education, I couldn't have wanted anywhere else to go to school. In terms of the environment that I was in, um, it really nurtured me into, um, you know, in, in, in many aspects. In, 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 for example, in the sense of what I do, my aesthetic dentistry, I think the fact that I have a European flair has aided my success here in America because right from day one, I really believe that it's so much better for us to provide natural results. And when I first moved to California, it was really all about plastic, fantastic, yeah. and, you know, and the teeth were like literally toilet bowl white. And it was just something that didn't sit well with me. Um, I realized that you know people want to look more beautiful and I realized I have a very keen eye for beauty myself, so I know what is beautiful, but I think there's a fine line between beauty and then looking artificial. Mm -hmm. And and I think I can attribute a lot of my you know my, my sense of style and my sense of what is beautiful and what is natural from being brought up in Europe. Um, and that, that really helped me out a lot. That's great. Uh, we know that it's been said that your style is described as posh and cultivated. So, <laughs> so I can imagine that pours into your work in dentistry as well. What are some of the ways that you are able to blend the spa aspect and the dentistry together to make people more comfortable here? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of it is in the mind. So if you're anticipating going to a place where you've been told as a child it's, it's painful, it's uncomfortable, it smells peculiar, you know, it looks peculiar, the people don't, you know, treat you particularly nicely, then that becomes something that, you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and then you go there and you're expecting it to be awful and therefore it probably will be awful. So the first thing that what I try to do is in setting up the spa is to remove all those negative um, aspects of what a yeah. dental office can typically have. We definitely got very important. <laughs> yes, we felt like that at a spa. <laughs> so yeah, so I try to hit all the senses. So from the smells that you you have when you walk in, the choice of color that we use, flowers that we have, even the room, even the way that the rooms are set up, we try not to have too many very medical or harsh looking things out. So kind of allow the patients to be in a more comfortable state of mind and so we find that when they come here and they're already relaxed then they're less likely to be anxious or you know or, 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 or have, a, have a problem with treatment. That's amazing I, I definitely got that sense when I walked in here Thank you. a sense of comfort and not that dentist feel at all. I agree so if you guys are interested in checking out Aura Dentistry Spa it's here located in the heart of Beverly Hills and uh, we love the experience that we had here and we're really excited to take the tour. Dr. Sam Soleil is going to give us a tour of his place from A to Z, so join us. Okay, so come in here, check in at the concierge desk, and then this is one of our um, lobbies okay. where patients can come in and relax before their appointments. Okay. Have a beautiful view over oh, there. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, beautiful view. And then we have our second waiting area. Yeah, this is yeah. like for a longer procedure if somebody wants to lay down. Okay. And then this is probably my favorite part of the office. We have a, an wow. atrium with a bar in it and it overlooks where they are dry. So this is a really nice place to come and have a drink, a or a tonic I love it. before or after the treatment or if our patients come with their friends, this is a great place for them to wait for the patients. Very nice setup. Okay, so down the hallway here are all different treatment rooms. We have the, each individual treatment room styles um, depending on the procedures that's going to take place. So you can see this one is all white and clean and this is, this is where all the, uh, the hygiene happens. So this is where the hygienist works for the cleanings. My favorite part, I love getting my teeth clean. Do you really? Yeah, I do. You're matching the room right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, and then we decided to make the treatment rooms designed differently. So this one has more of a masculine feel wow. to it. It's more, you know, darker colors, black, so the guys will really feel more comfortable in this room. Wow, very cool, very modern. And then we designed this room to be a little bit more feminine, lighter area, 
this is something that you know the ladies will probably pretty. feel more comfortable yeah. with. <laughs> Amazing, I love the little touches. Very details, yes, very nice. Okay, so that concludes our tour. We had a great time here with Dr. Sam Salak. We got to experience the unique dentistry spa. Thank you so much for Thank your time. You. Thank you so much. We had a great time here. We hope you took a lot away from this because we know we did. And if our viewers want to find you on social media, where can they find you? Uh, I am on Instagram under my name, Dr. Sam Saleh, okay. and the same handle for Twitter and my Facebook fan page. Awesome. Well, thank Great. you so much, Dr. Saleh. We so enjoyed much. ourselves. Bye. 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 Thank you.